on the webinar that was done before Christmas. So this is kind of a, just a bit of a follow on from that. And we're going to be talking about testing and developing aerobic fitness. Um, first of all, just for those of you that may not know who I am, my name is Ian Malone. I'm a GPO with me, GA, and also prevent, uh, presenting with me today is James Mitchell, who's also a GPO with me, GA, and he'll be talking later on about, about mass, and I'll be talking just a little bit about the energy systems and the 1K time trial. Okay. So first of all, we'll go through the learning outcomes that we have for today. So first one there you see, we're going to learn okay. how to use the one collaborative time trial to individualize training. And second, we have, yeah. you'll be able to understand how to improve conditioning through MAS or maximum aerobic speed and condition games. Okay. So what I'm going to do, first of all, before we go any further, is there's a question on the screen there, if you can all see it. Just in case you can't see it, I'll read it out for you. And it's just very simple. Why is fitness important? And I'm going to, going to give you all about a minute, a minute and a half. And you can use a chat box function if you want to throw in your answer to what that question. What do you think is important about fitness? So we'll give about a minute, a minute and a half, and you can fire, it, fire away into the chat box. Naomi, for optimal performance, yeah. Peter, for health, yeah. Fun and education at the same time, yeah. All want to sustain pace of the game, able to perform skills under less pressure. Ivan, happy and well-balanced life. Yeah, good stuff. Is the answers are flying in there? We can't even keep up. <laughs> to enable us to live from day to day, or day to the day, and perform to the best of our abilities. Yeah, stamina. Yeah, hang on. Fueling the body with correct nutrition, but also to prevent injury. Good stuff. Competitiveness, yeah, exactly. Platform to participate, develops the body to handle the stresses imposed by the game, thus reducing injury risk. Yeah, so that's good stuff, guys. You have the fair gist of it. There's many reasons that you all put in. I didn't see one that I disagree with. I don't know about you guys. Um, so yeah, that's exactly it. So we're gonna move on. And we're going to talk a little bit about the energy systems that the human body will use during exercise. OK, so we're not going to get bogged down too much on this. The three main energy systems that you might hear of would be the ATP CP system. You'd hear about the anaerobic glycolysis or the glycogen system, as you would probably hear it more commonly referred to. And then the third one is your aerobic system. Now, there's a, there's a small difference between a couple of these. so. Number one and two, the ATP CP and the glycogen system, these energy systems are used without the use of oxygen. So these will be used under circumstances where your body is using up a lot more oxygen than it's actually able to take in, while our aerobic system is utilized with the use of oxygen. OK, so moving on to talk a little bit about the anaerobic system, as I just, as just said previously, it works without the use of oxygen. An example of where the anaerobic system would be used more commonly would be your typical 100 meter sprint. You have your your Gaelic football and your hurlers, your your camogie, uh, rugby, all soccer, where you'd have kind of short bursts where you might be running to make a tackle or running to win the ball, or you might be in possession of the ball running. And it's that short burst. And when you're making those short bursts, the anaerobic system is what's mainly at work there. And the thing about the anaerobic system, though, is there is a limited total time this energy be, energy can be produced and maintained due to the amount of oxygen that the, that is actually required. Uh, the anaerobic system, it causes what's called what's called the buildup of lactic acid, 
which results in fatigue or what I'm sure everyone here is more common, commonly uh, familiar with would be cramp. And that's essentially what cramp is. Cramp is caused by a buildup of lactic acid in the muscles. And this happens because it's under, anaer it's under anaerobic conditions. Okay, and the anaerobic system is very important in sports such as playing football and hurling that require explosive speed and power and performance. Okay. On the other hand, we've got the aerobic system, which works with the use of oxygen. And in contrast to the anaerobic system, the aerobic system produces much larger amounts of energy, but not as rapidly as you can produce in the anaerobic system. A perfect example of that would be a marathon runner. You think about Mo Farah, he'd be running marath marathons and you think about how long a marathon actually takes to run. So they're running at a, ve at a kind of a steady speed, but they're using plenty, uh, plenty of energy, but it's just not created as rapidly as is needed for, say, a sprinter. You think about Usain Bolt to be a sprinter or even even your Gaelic football players who be making the short bursts. And the reason why we're kind of talking about this is high aerobic capacity can actually enhance recovery from the short duration exercises that you normally associate with Gaelic football. So while you're using the anaerobic system a lot in Gaelic football, having a good aerobic system is very important as well, because what it does is it'll actually en enhance the recovery time so that you're able to continue to repeat these, these bouts of high, in, high intensity um, movements throughout the game for a long period of time. Um, the next slide is just kind of a bit of an illustration. So you can see it's a good example where we we're talking about 100 meters to 400 meters. Think about track and field. So the first 10 seconds um, of a sprint to be using the anaerobic and even up to a minute when you're doing the 400 meters, the anaerobic system is still the one that's utilized more. As you get up to two minutes, you're getting to the point where it's 50% anaerobic and 50% aerobic. And then you're going to two hours plus where you've got your marathon runners where it actually completely flips the other way and you're going from, you're going up to 98% aerobic system compared to only 2% of the anaerobic system in use. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about, uh, anyone who was in the GA 15 and small sided games webinar before Christmas would probably have seen a couple of these things already, but we're going to go through them anyway, just to get a bit of a refresher for anyone who hasn't seen them. So the physical demands of Gaelic games outcomes from this. We're going to go through briefly the O2 model. I'm going to briefly talk about the physical demands of Gaelic games and we're going to briefly cover the, con the conditioning continuum. Okay, so I'm sure if, if anyone's got um, done the award one coaching qualification, you would have most likely come across the O2 model. So we can see the four main things about the O2 model. We've got tactical prowess in the top left corner. In the top right, we've got team play. Bottom left, we've got technical proficiency. Uh, uh, bottom yeah, bottom left. And then bottom right, we've got physical fitness. All right, so combine those four together along with psychological focus and that's what we would commonly be refer to as total playing performance so technical proficiency is just you know, the ability to perform underlying techniques accurately and consistently tactical prowess be able to kind of weigh up match situations and decide on the spot like what's the best action to take what's the right pass to give what's the right uh, what's the right run to make um team play uh, the ability to anticipate the movements of your teammates and kind of synchronize with them like what's going to happen like and that would that would be kind of useful for when you're when you're in training and you've practiced kind of you know your, your typical set pieces or tactical movements tactical plays and then what we're focusing on mostly today is the physical fitness and it's the it's the ability to be able to perform these actions okay so if you haven't got the physical fitness but you have the rest of the three. So if you've got your technical proficiency, your tactical prowess and your team play, but you're lacking the physical fitness, yeah, you might be able to do it for maybe one half or maybe three quarters of a game, but you might not be able to last the full 60 or 70 if you're playing inter-county. So that's kind of why physical fitness is very important when it comes to this. So we're just going to go through a couple of graphs that will illustrate the differences in 
what's uh, what's required what's required from players depending on what level they're at. So this one is just going to show the kind of the average distance that's covered by players in a game. So we're looking at Inter County. The average distance covered is just short of nine nine thousand meters. So just short of nine kilometers covered in a game. And uh, you're going down to club players, you're going down a little bit, so about seven seven and a half thousand. And then obviously going down to youth, you're going down a little bit more, just below six thousand. Um, this is probably probably my favourite of, of the bunch, and uh, this kind of shows the movement activities of Gaelic football and kind of what percentage of the time you spend in a game performing these actions. So probably the one that stands out there would be the fact that walking actually consists of 43% of what you do in a game on average. And if you go down, the next highest would be jogging at 19%. 17% of the time you're actually stationary, and that would now that typically happen during your breaks in play. Um, backing and shuffling, so you have obviously have a, an oncoming attacker coming and you're kind of backing and shuffling, trying to, trying to cover the space. 6% uh, of the time is spent running and only 3% is actually spent doing game related. And that would be including having possession of the ball, passing. Okay, and the last figure to show you here is kind of showing the difference in difference in the high intensity distance that's covered by, by elite athletes, depending on what position that they play. So you see, it, you wouldn't be surprised to see that half forwards tend to have the highest. So that's over two and a half, over, over 2000 meters covered at a high intensity um, for half forwards. Just short of that would be half backs, which just short of 2000, around 19, um, 1900 there. Going down, then the next one would be midfielders. Midfielders are about 1500, just over 1500. Full backs would be 1300 and then just below them would be full forward so the full forward would tend to tend to have the least least amount of high intensity distance covered in a game compared to a half forward which actually has over 2000. okay so what you see in front of you here is what's known as the conditioning continuum so the three things that, that you'd really always think about when you're when you're thinking about training and getting players ready for for a match pace would be speed, strength, and endurance, and they kind of work hand in hand with each other. So you combine speed and strength, you've got what we know as what we know as power. You combine strength and endurance, we've got strength and endurance. And then what we're mainly focusing on for today is when you combine speed and endurance, you get speed endurance, which is basically what we're going to be covered covering with um, maximal aerobic speeds. Okay, so very quickly here, we're gonna we're gonna briefly touch on the one kilometer time trial. So some of you guys might have heard of this, some of you may not. The one kilometer time trial it is probably the best tool for measuring aerobic fitness or speed endurance, as we just mentioned previously. And what happens here is players perform 10 100 meter shuttles in the fastest time possible. Now on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about how the actual testing procedure goes. But for now, there's just one more question. Or there's two questions on the screen. So one at a time. For, start it off. We'll, we'll start off with why do we test? So we'll, we'll give another minute, another minute and a half for you guys to put into the chat. And just if you want to give a stab at answering that question, why do we test? This is a, this is in terms of fitness testing. So we'll give it give it a bit a minute, a minute and a half. And you guys can use the chat. Ian, phone. just while you're waiting for yeah. um, responses there, Marcus was in the chat asking, he was saying how the stats are excellent and was wondering if the presentation would be available. So, Marcus, we will share out, with, I'll circulate the link to this presentation and I'll also make a YouTube video with the recording. Um, so you'll be able to access it via video and you'll also have the PowerPoint then as well. Yeah, cheers, Ian. Uh... Owen oh, says formulate programs from baseline tests. Yeah, exactly. C levels of fitness and improvements down the line. Yeah, track, track progress. Get baseline that we can use to measure improvements or regressions. Get a baseline. A few of are on the same line there to find current level of fitness. Yeah. Yeah, bang on. Exactly. And that kind of answers the, the next question as well. So the, so the next question was going to be. Um, Sorry, guys, I just have to get my presentation back up here. Um, we're talking about the benefits, and as as a lot of you guys mentioned, like you get you get a bit of structure. Uh, it can 
if you do it together as a team, you can kind of create a positive culture where teammates are kind of encouraging each other, kind of challenging challenging each other to improve on their scores, improve on, on their times. Um, as some of you mentioned, it, it gives a bit of insight to where where you are fitness wise, what what level you're at with your fitness, and it makes it easier to actually set targets and goals instead of guessing. You've actually got something in front of you. You've got a target. You've got a base. Or you've got a baseline there. And it allows you to start setting targets, start setting goals for the future. So in four weeks, I want to prove my time. I want to improve my time by X amount of seconds or I want to I want to cover X more amount of meters or cover a bit more distance. Uh, it can also give a mental edge on opponents, because if you have it in your head that you've you know, you're you're reaching your goals in terms of your fitness when you're if you're hitting your goals, it can give you that little bit of a mental edge in your opponent. You just get the feeling that you're that you're in peak physical physical condition and you can actually get the better of your opponent. Can anyone think, I don't actually have it on the screen there, but could anyone think of any weaknesses you might have with fitness testing? If anyone has any idea of any weaknesses, we'll just give it 30 seconds to see if anyone has anything on that. Players holding back, yeah. Very good. Conditions, yeah, that's a very good one. So I suppose a good example of that, and I'd probably explain that, would be if you'd done your initial testing, your baseline testing, it could have been, I don't know, it could have been a really good day to know, like the ground was was wasn't soft, it was, it was just perfect conditions. And then you have your retest in four weeks and you're running through an absolute bog and just, you can't, like, you can't get traction. Of course, the conditions are a bit different there, so your score might not be as good as you'd probably expect it to be. That's that's a very good point. Players not putting in 100%. Yeah. Fatigue. Yeah, depending on 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 their program, there could there could be fatigue in there. Only measures that day. Guy could be tired from work. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, and I see, Linda, you just mentioned there about could feel embarrassed about their performance. And the point I was going to make there is while while players, if they do it together, if teammates do it together, there is the potential that they could get a bit disheartened. So let's say, for example, myself and James would be would be doing the same fitness tests and James get a much, gets a much higher score than me. Um, I might start thinking in my head there, Jesus, I'm, I'm nowhere near the level I need to be. James is miles ahead of me. So it can... It can get a bit disheartening if you feel like your score, if your score is lower, lower than a couple of your teammates, you might feel like you're lagging way behind. And it can it can be a bit of a blow, but on the flip side, that can easily be turned into a positive rather than a negative, because if you have supportive teammates around you, um, it kind of gives the encouragement that you can actually use it as a benchmark. So I could look at James's score and it's much higher than mine. I say, right, if I can get up to James's, if I, if I could even get maybe a little, just a little bit, little bit closer to James's score, I'll be happy with myself because I'll have shown a bit of uh, a bit of improvement. So that's very good, guys. Some very good answers in there. OK. So just before we move on to mass, we're just going to have a look at the testing procedure that we actually have up here for the one kilometre time trial. So it's fairly simple. The equipment you need, two markers or cones, and that can be cones, it depends what you have. Like if you don't have cones, which is simple, if you have a top, if you have a bag, anything that can be used to, to just mark a certain spot. So you have two markers, your stopwatch, obviously to time it, and then you need the ability to measure out 100 meters if, um, if you have the equipment to do it. So probably the easiest one to be using there would be a trundle wheel if you have one handy. And um, if not, um, some, you know, some pitches and walking tracks might actually have 100 meters marked on them. Um, and otherwise you could you could use G a GPS on your smartwatch or, your, or an app on your phone. All right. So for the setup, it's fairly simple. You place one marker for your starting point and then you measure out 100 meters from that starting point. And once you've measured out 100 meters, you place your second marker on the on that surface and generally when you're doing this uh, this test you want to actually have it on a flat surface if possible and obviously it'd be ideal if you could do it on on grass as well all right and how do you do it it's fairly simple so from the starting point yeah you obviously have someone taking the time so you could have someone going three two one and then blow the whistle and it's very simple you run out 100 meters to to the marker 
and you basically touch the cone or touch the line, whatever it might be, and then you turn back and you repeat this 10 times. OK, and then once you're finished there, um, obviously, whoever's recording the time will will be able to give you a time. Uh, I don't we don't actually have anything in this presentation on, on what would constitute a good time for a 1K, but if you're if you're looking to kind of be at a reasonable level of fit, fitness, you'd probably be aiming to have a score that would be under four minutes, I'd say, if we're talking about adult player, let's say under four minutes would be a pretty good score. OK. Um, just before we continue on, guys, is there any questions on anything we've covered so far? Guys, if you'd prefer to ask your question out loud again, like I said before, there's the raise hand function um, and we can get around to you or fire it into the chat box. Ian, um, just while we're waiting for any questions or anything like that, um, David actually made a good point when you asked about the why do we test? And he made the point that potentially retesting is more important. Would you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, when you when you do your baseline test, you're not just doing that just to get the level of fitness and then forgetting about it. You're going to want to kind of have to have a timeline set out where there's there is monthly testing or bi-monthly testing or you're testing after a certain period of time. So, yeah, if you're if you're doing a baseline test and getting getting there, you're going to want to try and have a have a retest just to kind of let players um, show where their improvements are and just kind of it kind of helps the coach as well to keep track of, of players progress. So they might see if some if some players aren't putting the effort in or or some players are exceeding their goals like um it kind of gives a better insight so where whatever program they have you could you could switch it up so if they're if they're exceeding their goal really well then you might not have to change it at all if they continue making those those improvements or if it's not working out for them and they actually are trying to put the effort in you might have to have a rethink about uh what what they're actually doing to improve the fitness whether they're getting enough recovery time or whether whether what they're doing is the right thing for them um would you have anything else to add there, James or Ian, on that? No, I think you uh, hit the nail on the head there, Ian. Yeah, Ian, I don't know if you can see the chat box. Um, there's loads of questions flying in here now. Um, first out, it's Sersha asking, is it a sprint out and back continuously to complete the 10 runs? Uh, yeah, you're you're trying to cover this in the fastest time you possibly can. So you would be putting in um, pretty much maximal effort. Obviously, you'd, you'd have to try and pace yourself as well, because if you go full belt for the first 100 metres, you know, you're full 100% flat out, you might start, you, well, there's no might about it, you probably will start to fatigue earlier on and then it could affect your time. So this is why... We'll, we'll cover this a bit more when we're talking about uh, mass. So this is why it's kind of important to get to get that um that high that high running velocity so you're running at a high speed and you're able to sustain it for a long period of time so you'd be going you'd be, you're basically trying to complete the, the the one kilometer in as fast a time as possible but realistically you're you're not going full belt for for each of the 100 meters or, the, or you'll you'll end up slowing up and, and getting fatigue and it will, will severely affect your time um i have the chat box open now What's the recommended age of testing one kilometre uh, for performance or performing mass training, in your opinion? Um, you wouldn't want to be going. I, I, you need Ian. Do you want to take this? I'd say you wouldn't want to be going any younger than than under 15s, but you'd probably be more looking at maybe minor under 20s and up to adult level when you're talking about um, one kilometre testing. What do what, what would you think about that, Ian? Yeah, it would definitely be um, youth players. So I, I, I wouldn't even maybe go 15. I'd probably say 15 and up rather than under 15. Mm. Um, otherwise, you'd be trying to look at all your conditioning through a small set of games and stuff like that. So Because obviously, the most important thing is to have a ball involved. This sort of training and the testing is probably more ideal at the moment because obviously we're, individu we're training individually and we're not allowed contact and things like that. So the ball isn't as much of an option. Um but I wouldn't, uh, this is Owen's question, so Owen, I probably wouldn't be looking at younger than under 15. I'd probably be looking at 15 and up. And for your minors and for older adult players, absolutely perfect then. 
that kind of follows in actually to uh, Maudie's question about the Bronco. I know um, we've been using the Bronco a good bit lately. Um, the handiness of the 1K and just how standardized it is is probably that the the main draw of this um, of using the 1K Modi. But the Bronco 100% a viable test um, because it is probably is potentially is more game specific as it's over a longer period of time. But then you would just wouldn't be able to translate to that mass training just th- because but as James has shown now in a few minutes, we can use our 1K to then individualize the training for the mass. And that's one of the key benefits there. Okay, another question there from Oliver. If testing in small groups, would it be a good idea to group players on similar ability? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that'd be, um, that'd probably be best because you'd be putting players who are kind of at the same level and you're not having players. It, it'd take away the, the potential problem that I mentioned earlier where you could have one player who's, I don't know, there could be one player who's a very good cross-country runner and one player who's, who's just a very explosive player. There could be a, there could be a big difference in their, in their 1K times. And it kind of take away it. It take away the issue of having having a big difference and potentially having one one player feeling a bit um a bit disheartened about his time compared to compared to someone else's time. So yeah, I'd say it'd be, it'd be a fairly good a good practice to have have players kind of grouped together in kind of a similar ability. Um, do we have any more? We've won from Jeff Brannigan. Is four minutes a good time for a senior championship player at championship time? Um, again, I don't have any data on me to actually go off, but I would say no. I'll jump I'd in s- on that, Ian, if yeah, that suits. Yeah. yeah, work away. Um, I know from personal experience and stuff that inter-county players are come championship time or when they're flying would be much closer to three um so four minutes would be a decent would be where you the minimum you'd want for an adult footballer it's a um i've seen inter-county players come in at about 305 310 when they're flying fit so um four minutes would kind of be maybe your tail end your players who are a less fit come champ a club players come champ to time I'd say Jeff okay cheers Ian um we've one more coming in from Seamus should players be aware of their training heart rates before engaging in this uh I'd say there'd be no harm to, to, to keep an eye on I know a lot of people would have kind of smart watches with them now. So if, I'd say if they have them to use, I'd say, yeah, fire away and keep a, keep an eye on them. Um, just um, obviously, it'd be a good idea just to keep an eye on it just for for health reasons as well, just just in case anyone has any, anything, any underlying conditions, especially if anyone does have anything underlying, it would be be very um very important to keep monitor monitoring this but it would be good practice to keep an eye on it as well it kind of helps see it helps see where their effort level is at as well if they want to have a look at it because they would get an idea of where their heart rate is at like and how much how much effort they're actually having to put in hope that uh hope that helps you out there shins um if there's no more questions for now we'll we'll get cracking on a bit more if if you're you're all set, James, yeah? Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah, good stuff. If you just want to keep flicking on, Ian, sure. Yeah, you just give me a shout whenever you need to flick yeah. on. Right, thanks, lads. Um, yeah, firstly, I am James. Um, I, had my, I was talking earlier, but the mic was on mute, so um, it's a good start to it. But um, yeah, just hope everyone is um, keeping safe and healthy at the minute, and I'll just get cracking on my section here, so... What I'm going to be taking you through is the maximum aerobic speed. Okay, so some some of you might be familiar with this. Um, it, it's quite a useful tool at the minute. The kind of Ian Quinn would have hit on there um, earlier that um, obviously that we can't get together and do group um, training. It it's, has loads of different benefits. So um, definitely for this time we're kind of individual training. I'll show you how we can use our one kilometer time that we talked about earlier and how we can kind of use that to calculate our maximum aerobic speed and how we can use um, use that time and that uh, maximum aerobic speed to make a program pretty much. I'll go through a couple of different um, high intensity interval training methods. Um, yeah, just before I'll go through the, the what, the how and the why, okay? Um, 
So yeah, ju just before I suppose we get stuck into this, just to make it clear that at the end of the day, this is just one piece of the jigsaw, okay? So it's not going to be the, the be all and end all of what makes a team, okay? So like we touched on in the O2 model, it's, it's made up of four quarters, okay? So physical fitness, okay? But at the end of the day, if we aren't, I suppose, good at what we do, so it's better be football or hurling, okay? That's going to, you know, be a bigger influence in this. So um, this is just one piece of the jigsaw, like I said. Um, the skills, tactics, and team play, okay, are, are probably more of more importance, okay? So, yeah. Look, I'll just go to it anyway. It's a useful tool this time of the year. It definitely can be useful um, going forward, but that's not, in, not the be all end all, like I said, okay? Um, yeah, so what is, is maximum aerobic speed, okay? So some there's some kind of confusing jargon here. Um, so look, I wouldn't get too strong by it, but pretty much maximum aerobic speed is simply the lowest running speed at which maximum, uh, maximum oxygen uptake for VO2 max occurs, okay? So um, it's commonly referred to as the VVO2 max, okay? Or the velocity um, associated with VO2 max, okay? So then terms might be a little bit confusing for somebody who doesn't come from an S&C or sports science background, okay? But Basically, what it is is it's just how fast you're running at your maximal uh, aerobic capacity. Okay, so if you're kind of exceeding that um, speed, okay, you're kind of going towards our anaerobic. Okay, so we're focusing, like Ian Malone went on earlier, and um, we're focusing on our aerobic here. Okay, if you kind of exceed that speed, we're going in towards our anaerobic. Okay, and that's a different energy system. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah. So why it was developed? Okay, so maximum aerobic speed was developed um, for the purpose of increasing. The specificity of training um, and to enable coaches to prescribe and monitor training loads more accurately, okay? And I'm going to touch on that a little bit more as we go forward. Okay, Ian, if you want to flick on. Hopefully that's clear, um, my connection, it could be a little bit jumpy, but you know, can hear me all right? Okay, I'll carry on. Um, yeah, so pretty much how it works, okay? So the amount of time spent at at or above 100% MAS, okay, uh, threshold appears to be a critical factor for improving aerobic power, okay. So, just here, what is this? high aerobic power is an important aspect of performance in both Gaelic football and hurling, okay. So, the last point here performing a number of short intervals at greater than 100% maximum aerobic speed was a more effective method of building aerobic power than uh, LSD, okay. So, that's kind of your long, slow duration running, which is kind of like your. Um, your 5Ks, your 3Ks, you probably would have seen a lot of debate going on um, back during the lockdown with people doing 5Ks and a lot of experts were kind of slating them and stuff like that. So look, there probably is a place for your kind of longer slow runs, okay? Um, it does work, but this kind of interval style um, macroaerobic speed work uh, is a little bit more, more effective, okay? So just the last point here, this approach is also more effective, like I said, than attempting to train running one interval continuously at 100% mass. Okay, so it is a bear. Okay, and it's a kind of uh, you can even you can even think yourself that when you compare to a game, okay, instead of just doing one long slow run, okay, this style of kind of interval of stop and starting, okay, it kind of mimics the game a lot more than a 3k or a 5k would. So that's kind of when we talk about being uh, I suppose specific to the sport. Okay, and if you want to flick on. Okay, so yeah, just a little bit more detail here on it, okay? So why we use um, maximum aerobic speed, okay? So maximum aerobic uh, speed, what you, like I said, okay? And we have to go more accurately. So I'll kind of touch on that a little bit more as we go on. So um, what it has here is to quantify the intensity of specific run training, okay? So instead of just... Sorry, it could be connection could be something here. Yeah, it's it's kind of coming and going, James. There's times where it's grand and then it gets a bit jumpy it's in places. Okay. Can you hear me um, all right there at the minute? Is there anything that um that you guys want to go back on really quick? Is there anything that do you want James to explain again? Or anything you might have missed? We have to apologize for Connacht Wi Fi. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Can you hear me Yeah, it's okay. Um, it's a bit broken, but I think just carry on for now. And uh... okay. If you just want to jump in and give me a shout if it's if it's kind of breaking up, and I'll just uh, go back over what I done. If that's all right. 
that's no problem. Yeah, yeah. Grant. If it gets real bad, Ian, even if you want to jump in or, or just take off for a little while, um, so we'll see how it goes. Apologies for that. Yeah, so I, I'll just start off on this slide again. So why it was developed, okay? So it's basically developed to make training more specific um, and to enable coaches to monitor training load more accurately, okay? So what I can do, we can quantify the intensity um, of a specific run training, okay? So instead of just going out and picking a random distance and um, I suppose make a work hard that you can actually use at one point in time, calculate mass, and we can actually give them a percentage to um, to work off. So it could be uh, 80, 90, 100%, okay? So that's kind of making it uh, that we can quantify the intensity. Can you hear that right, lads? Yeah. Yeah, crack on. Yeah. Um, so why we use it, okay? It's useful, useful for prescribing individual training for players. So this is a huge benefit at the minute, okay? So... We kind of don't have access to players as coaches. Uh, we don't really know what they're doing, okay, and what kind of level they're at. So what we could do is, like Ian Malone touched on earlier, we could give them a one kilometer test to do at home. There's different apps and stuff that we could track to make sure they're doing it correctly, okay. Um, and from that score, we can calculate our maximum aerobic speed, um, and then we can individualize training pro uh, programs for players off that, okay. And that goes for even when we're on the pitch as a group, okay. We can individualize individualize it a little bit more. So instead of, I suppose, um, just having the one goal or the one target for all players that we can, um, I suppose, we can. what we can do is split them up into groups and we can have, if we have a panel of 30, we can have, um, I suppose, one group, the top group, who are, I suppose, pooled together. They're probably the fittest group, okay, you'd have your middle group and your, your weaker group, okay, and you can set different goals, okay, and it's a little bit competitive when everyone is at the one level or similar levels in comparison to kind of having... A mix of the fittest and the least fit in one group, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and the how here. So I use the maximum aerobic speed programming tool to individualize and prescribe appropriate training for players. Um, so I'm going to touch on that a little bit as Ian, if you want to flick on. Just before we, uh, we move on, James, there's just a question in the chat there from David. He's asking about the Cooper test, which is the 12 minute run during easy to, or it's easy to test to gauge players. What would you? What would you think about that as a as a test for mass? Um, to be honest with you, some of the, the the research and kind of what I've I know is that I suppose we use the one K here just for I suppose the ease of use and it's kind of straightforward and it's an easy figure to remember. But what I've kind of come across is that to get the most accurate um, mass score, I don't know how reliable this is now, but. I, Apparently between a four and six minute run, okay, so um, it could be, depending on what level you're at, whether you're with a minor team or an adult team, and depending on their fitness, it could be between one, 1 1.2 kilometer and 1.6. So, um, yeah, that probably will give you the most accurate maximum aerobic speed score as far as I know. Um, Ian Quinn, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, so in terms of for the mass, obviously, yeah, I think four, six minute run or the 1K. So even if you wanted to do the 1K, if you wanted to push it to 1.2K um, and run for that a little bit longer. But in terms of the actual Cooper test specifically, David, um, the 12 minute run at the minute now is obviously so easy to test because you don't need to get lads to field run. We've all got either a smartwatch or a running app on our phone. So you could get a player to go out start the timer and run to run for 12 minutes and record your time. You can send a screenshot, whatever. So during COVID times like that, absolutely, David, really handy test to do. But just to, in order to individualize training after that, that's why we're kind of using the using the 1K and the mass then to do that. Because if we have the if we have the 12 minute Cooper test, it's awkward to put it back into mass, like James was saying. But 100% a valid test and will give you a great picture of where lads are because it is probably a little bit more sport specific and we can all access it just, just by hit, run, stepping out and hitting on the road. Okay. Any of you, you want to follow on? If that's all the questions. Perfect. Okay, hopefully. Can you hear me all right? Um. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just go through how we can calculate, okay, our maximum aerobic speed. So there are some online calculators, okay, if you want to go look, and, and there's different formulas, but I suppose this is probably the most simple um, simple one, okay. It's 
yeah, you, all you need is a piece of paper and pen, okay, and once you have the formula, it's quite simple to do, okay, and a calculator. So pretty much what it is is just distance um, in meters, okay, divided by time in seconds, and that will give you your maximum aerobic speed, okay, and that's going to be given given in meters per second, okay. So a little example one we have here, okay, so like I spoke about with the 1.2 kilometer run, okay, so you just convert that to meters because it's always in meters, and that gives us 1,200, okay, and then all you have to do is convert your um, your time, okay, into seconds, so the total seconds there is 270, and all you have to do, do is divide uh, one by the other, okay, so the distance divided by the time, and that will give you your 100% your maximum aerobic speed score, okay, so for this player, their 100% MAS score is 4.4 meters per second, okay. Hopefully that makes sense and you can hear me there, lads. Yeah, good to go. Yeah, flick on. Okay, so using the one kilometer that, that Ian would have spoke about earlier here is uh, another example, okay? So this player's time was 3 minutes and 40, okay? So using the same formula, okay? So just the difference is, uh, the distance is different, okay? So what we're going to do is just convert our... Uh, time to seconds and our uh, kilometers to meters, okay? And like again, we divide our distance by our time, okay? So 1,000 divided by 220, and that gives us 4.5 uh, meter, meters per second, okay? So our maximum aerobic speed, the score is always in meters per second, okay? So working off that that time trial, okay, that player would have um, a 100% MAS score of 4.5, okay? So hopefully that's clear for you. That's, that's if you want to flick on again okay perfect yeah so look these are just some of common methods okay that we can use to develop ourselves uh, aerobically okay so we probably have all seen these in some shape or form okay but what i'm going to do today is i'm going to go through um some of the work to rest ratios um some of the sets and reps okay and the percentage of mas um that we will use at these different methods, okay? So, like I said, we're going about um, how it makes it a little bit more specific, okay? Um, and hopefully it'll be a little bit clearer. You've probably all seen these methods before in some shape or form, but I'm just trying to make it, um, I suppose, a little bit clearer for you. So, yeah, the, the four that we're going to look at and probably four of the most common are long intervals, um, grids method, the Eurofit method, or the 120, 15, 15 on, and the Tabata method, okay? So uh, I'm sure that you, most of you have probably come across this at some stage, but um, yeah, we'll go forward and I'll kind of talk a little bit more in detail about each and I will show you how to calculate, um, I suppose, a program using um, an MAS score, okay? So for long intervals, um, they usually last from 60 seconds, okay, up to five minutes, okay, depending on where you start or, or whatever kind of reform you want to do on them. Um, they're most commonly used in the early preparation phase. So these are most commonly used in the off season or pre season. Okay. Um, and these are usually completed around the 85% MAS score. Okay. So if you were to use these long intervals, you would go back to the 100% max score that we would have got for that player. So that would be 4.5 meters per second. Okay. All you would do then is multiply it by 85%. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully everyone's with me there. You multiply it by 85%. Okay. And then however many seconds you're working for, so for 60 seconds, you multiply that figure by 60, okay, and that will give you the amount of meters that you will travel in the 60 seconds, okay? Yeah, so just for these long intervals, um, the work to rest ratio can be at or above one is to one, okay? So an example here is if you're doing a two minute run, you can re run for two minutes, okay, and rest for two minutes, or you can run for two minutes and rest for a little bit below, so 90 seconds, okay? So these are a little bit less intense, so the recovery can be a little bit less than one is to one. OK, when we kind of come to one of some of our more intense, where our, our um, the maximum aerobic speed is a little bit higher than 85 percent. So we're going towards our 100, 110, 120. And um, we have to be careful, I suppose, of the sets and reps and the recovery time to be used because um, we might be able to maintain that intensity um, if not. OK, so just the last point here is the longer the interval and um, the lower the intensity. OK, so just example here I have is that if it's 90 seconds work at a higher intensity, so 95% MAS um, compared to four minutes, okay, so if it's a little bit longer in time, you reduce the intensity, so down to 85%, okay. I hope that's clear. As we go forward, these figures might become a little bit more clear, okay. Um, it might, I know this is kind of a little bit confusing for some people, so hopefully I just haven't lost what, uh, too many. Um, 
But as we go through, and if you want to have a look back once we've sent out this um, webinar and presentation, it might become a little bit clearer, okay? It's, I know it's a lot to get wrap your head around uh, at the minute, but... James, I'm just after firing a mass calculator there in a link for one online into the text box there as well. So if anyone wants to copy one for afterwards to play around with it. Or Perfect. Thanks, Ian. OK, so the, the second method we're going to look at here is the grids method. OK, so compared to our long intervals here, um, the duration is a little bit shorter. So we're going for 15 to 30 seconds compared to our one, our one to five minutes in our long intervals. OK. But because we're going a little bit shorter, we can increase our intensity. So um, and the intensity here is between 100 and 110. OK, so um, yeah, quite a little bit higher than the, the long intervals. OK, but obviously we have a shorter time, a shorter working time. OK, so this is also also interspersed with 15 to 30 seconds of active recovery. OK, so compared to the other one, OK, I suppose I didn't really hit on whether it was passive or active recovery. OK. Um, in actually a good idea for what you could do in them long intervals. Okay, so if you're doing a three minute run and you want to do a three minute recovery, well, you could give them, I suppose, 30 seconds to a minute recovery. Okay, and then that gives you another two minutes before you go for another rep. So in them two minutes, you could, I suppose, whether it be hurling or football, you could practice a soft skill. Okay, so it could be some form of active, rec active recovery. Okay, so it could be just standing on the spot, practicing striking off right or left, kicking off right or left. OK, um, I know it can be a long time. I suppose that's one of the downsides of the long intervals. But like I said, they're getting a little bit creative. We can practice on um, some skills. OK, so we're utilizing the time as best we can. OK. So for these, I suppose, um, these are a little bit more specific to the game. OK, in terms of that, I suppose, in a game when you work, it's probably rare that you probably come to a standstill for that time after you work. OK, unless the ball goes dead. Um, or there's an injury or a break and play, okay, that's probably the only time you might stand for a couple of seconds. So what I suppose makes this a little bit more specific to the game is that you're working, so you're working hard for 15 to 30 seconds at either 100 or 100, 110%, okay? But instead of just stopping and doing a full passive recovery, okay, you're doing an active recovery, okay? So you're still moving, so similar to a game, except you're going to be covering a shorter distance, okay, and a lower percent, uh, Percent intensity, okay. So you could be working between fifty and seventy, okay. Similar to a game, you work hard, okay. Um, and then on the short run here, you're going to keep moving. You back down to a recovery run, okay. Like you're recovering, but running back to your position, nice, uh, handy kind of half fifty percent run, okay. Um, and that suppose makes it a little bit more game specific, okay. And then in terms of how many minutes you would do it for, okay, you, you would go for between five and ten. So you'd probably start. At your lower range, okay, so you're five minutes, and then as you go through the weeks, you might increase that to get more reps in, okay. So the picture is really good here, and I suppose um it kind of hits on the point I made about the groups. Okay, so in this um picture here, they have a split into four groups, okay. So they have they have it based on I suppose fitness level. So obviously your fists are going to be in group one up here, and they're going to be covering the greatest distance, okay. So 72 meters, and those that I suppose are in the next group are covering 69, okay, and then 66 and 63, okay. So that makes it quite specific uh, and individual to each player, okay, or each group. Instead of just giving them one general distance and one um yeah, yeah general distance and time to hit. They've kind of specific goals here based on how they would have done in their one kilometer time trial. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, that would kind of help answer the answer the question that you that Oliver you you mentioned earlier about group and players of fitness. So what you have on your screen there would would be the perfect example of how you do that. So I hope that kind of helps it make a bit more clearer now that you see that in front of you. Uh, there's just another question in the chat there as well, James. Would you do a four minute run with four minutes rest at 85% mass? Um, yeah, that, I suppose that falls into your long interval. So yeah, there'd be no reason why you wouldn't. Um, like I said, those runs, I suppose, are kind of your early pre-season or off-season. So I suppose when you first come back, you might want to be trying to hit too high speeds. Um, you, might, you might be kind of, I suppose, trying to hit a lot of volume. And I suppose a four-minute run, you'd be kind of covering quite a distance of volume, okay, without kind of being too intense on the player. So, yeah, absolutely, you could do a four-minute on, four-minute off, and you could do that. So it just has to be time-conscious here. If you're doing a four-minute run, okay, and a four-minute recovery, that's eight minutes of a session gone. So you're not going to do too many of them, okay, because, look, if you only have an hour, okay, and you've 
you do three them runs, that's a 16, that's 24 minutes gone, so that's nearly half a session. So that's just one thing to be conscious. I don't know, Ian, or have you anything to say on that? No, that's bang on to me, yeah. Yeah. Grand, okay, so we can pop on to the next one there, Ian. Yeah. So this is the Eurofit method, okay? So I, I'm sure lots of you have probably seen that. I've, I'm quite familiar with this, and you've probably all seen this in one form or another, okay? So, um, yeah, so this is known, I suppose, as well as the 120%, okay? The 15 on, 15 off, okay? So like I said there, it works at 120%. So what you would do, I'm going to actually do a little um, example with using this method um, in two slides. So I'll give you an actual visual of how you would take someone's MAS score and how you would, um, I suppose, do a session, do a program using this method. Okay, it's just the most common, kind of easiest to do. So yeah, like I said, it's working at 120% MAS, okay, for 15 seconds. The recovery is passive, okay, um, and it's also 15 seconds long. So yeah, 15 on, 15 off. The recovery is passive, okay, because we're working at quite a high intensity. OK, um, we want to have our passive recovery. OK, if you were to give them a 50 percent run, um, I suppose after running at 120 percent, they probably wouldn't be able for it, to be honest with you. So because you're working at the upper limit of your higher intensity percent, OK, you give them a full break when they get to their distance. OK, they get their 15 seconds recovery and they're ready to go again. OK. Um, so yeah, the duration of a set would start at five. So look, if you're doing your 15 on, 15 off, five runs or five minutes sorry that would equal to about 10 runs okay um and then you could increase that up to I suppose 12 14 16 by increasing the minutes okay and you would be doing between one and two sets per session okay i'll, I'll do a little bit more on this as we go on i'll just show you i suppose how to um use an, an mas score in a one kilometer time trial okay and if you want to flick on Perfect. Can you hear me all right, lads? Bit jumpy at the moment, but for the most part, it's um, <clears throat> it's it seems to be doing all right. So I'd say Random. crack on. Yeah, apologies. So, um, yeah. So this is the Tabata method. Okay, so it's very similar to the Eurofit method. Okay, it works at around 120 percent. So we're working off the same um percent as the last one. Um, it can be used in smaller areas. So if you're stuck. For, the, for, I suppose, room, okay, if there's a couple, if you only have one pitch and there's a couple of teams then, and this can come in handy, or if you have, let's say, indoor facilities due to the weather or whatever the case might be, what you can do here is add turns, okay, which can be more sport-specific as well, okay, so be utilizing space and be more sport-specific, sport okay, um, so yeah, I think, I think some of the stats show that I think um, sprint distance is only kind of, kind of reach up to 20 meters in games so yeah this would be kind of ideal to kind of mimic that and be a bit more sport specific by incorporating turns okay so you could be doing your 20 meter run out and your 20 meter run back okay in comparison to the others um yeah and the work to rest ratio is, is two to one okay so similar to our one before okay our Eurofit method is the same 120 percent okay but we're recover our recovery is less okay so it's passive but it's half the time okay and Obviously, because it is, you have a little bit less um, recovery, uh, the sets are a little bit lower. So instead of five minutes, to 10 in the last one is kind of between four and eight. Okay, that's just to, I suppose, because the intensity is a, a little bit higher and the, um, the rest ratio is a little bit shorter. Okay. Okay, Ian, if you want to flick on. Okay. So this is just an example session, okay? So going back up to our player that I used earlier, okay? So we calculated his MAS, or him or her, okay? Their score to be, um, their 100% score to be 4.5 meters per second, okay? So I'm just going to use the Eurofit method, okay? So the 120%, 15 on, 15 off is probably the most straightforward uh, one to use. I'm just going to show you how you would uh, use the MAS score to calculate uh, and I suppose put together a little program uh, and a session using the scores. Okay, so like I said, that player that we had, their score was at 100%, it was 4.5 meters per second. Okay, like I said, also the Eurofit method works at 120%. Okay, so to work it out, all you have to do is multiply 4.5, so 100% score 
by 120%. Okay, so all you need is your calculator. You do the math there and it works out to be 5.4 meters per second. Okay, so the work to rest ratio for this method is 15 off, 15 off. Okay, and what you're going to do there is just multiply your 5.4 meters per second by 15. Okay, so that player, if you were to do these runs, would be covering 81 meters um, in the 15 seconds. Okay. Okay, and if you want to flick on, I'll just show you, I suppose, how you'd progress that onto a little program. I just went with the Eurofit method because it's probably the most straightforward, but I suppose I've given you the tools now and the calculations that if you want to, I don't know, get 1K off some of your 1K's times off some of your players or if, um, yeah, even children, if you have them on the call, they can go out, do it. You can have a little practice, okay, calculate their score. Uh, using the formulas that I've used, okay, and then you can try apply them to the different methods once you have your your work to rest ratios here, the percentage of mass that you use, okay. I've kind of given you the tools, so hopefully looking back on this, if it's if I'm going a little bit faster, you haven't kind of grasped it, you might be able to look back at the presentation and um, it might be a little bit clearer and you should be able to do the maths, hopefully. So yeah, this is just a little example one that I would use, okay, so just going off the calculations that we've done previously, okay, so the distance that we're going to cover is 81 meters, okay, like I said, the work to rest is 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off, okay? And probably on the first week, I would go at five minutes, okay? So that equals 10 runs, okay? And I'd probably do two sets in the training session, which would calculate to about 20 runs, okay? Um, yeah, and look, you might do that twice in the week, okay? So I suppose one thing that I wanted to touch on here was just some of our principles of training, okay? So... In terms of whether it be running, okay, whether it be in the gym, okay, we have to kind of create an overload, okay. And what I mean by an overload is you have to make it progressively a little bit more difficult over time, okay, or you're not going to get the adaption or the improvement that you want. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm kind of hitting at there is, is if you have this distance, okay, and if you leave it the same distance and the same sets and the same reps, okay, for a month straight or six weeks straight, there will be some kind of adaption or improvement at the start. OK, but at, over time, you're starting to plateau and there won't be an improvement unless you make it difficult and somehow. OK, so whether it be increasing the distance by two or three meters, OK, or like I've done here, I've increased the amount of runs per week. OK, to create it, make it a little bit harder each week. OK, and that will probably lead to a bigger improvement. OK, so how I've done that is on the first week, the time that we what we'd be doing is five minutes. OK, so on the next week, I would increase it to five and a half. Um, and then six and six and a half. So that's increasing the amount of runs per session each week. Okay. And it's gradual. Um, so there won't be any worry of, I suppose, overloading them too much that might cause um, an injury or something like that. Okay. Lads, hopefully that makes sense there. Yeah, you've just got a couple of questions after coming in if you want to try and field them, James. Um, yeah. So Oliver asks, at what stage of a session would you suggest is the best time to complete any one of these methods? Um, look, I think just off my own back and my own kind of um, how I used to do it myself, we probably would have done maybe one set straight after, one set after uh, the warm-up. So you're kind of fresh, probably a good adaption there. Um, what we uh, go away in between sets and you would do some small side game, you do some kind of a drill, okay, shooting, tackling, whatever the case might be. But um yeah, look, I'd probably start with your warm-up, okay. You might go straight into um a set of these, you might go away and focus on another area and then come back and mix and match, okay. Um lads, I don't know if you have an opinion on that. Yeah, I'd be thinking something similar to that. Yeah. Um you're I like you're training to, you want to be able to perform your skills in a match when you're tired as well. So getting that bout in at the start allows you to try work on that. And then it's actually, there's a nice kind of morale element to it, doing it as a finisher, as the last thing, like lads trying to get over the line together. So from that point of view, I really like it as well. Um, just one other question there, James, from Owen. Um, should there be any difference in distance calculations between the Orfit and Tabata methods? Um, because on your Tabata, the deceleration might impact it and players may not achieve their target uh, distance compared to the straight run in the Eurofit. That's a great point, actually. So well spotted. Um, yeah, look, the acceleration and deceleration definitely takes into effect there. So I was just, I kind of left it out. Um, I just didn't want to over confuse and put too much information there, but that was well spotted. So 
yeah, look, you might be able to cover 40 metres in 10 seconds running in a straight line, okay, but you might need to increase the time by a second if you're taking into um, account turns, okay, or you might want to reduce, okay, if you want to cover 40 metres in 10 seconds, okay, what you might do if you're putting in a turn is take away a metre, so you're, you're only running out 19, okay, and running back 19, so maybe you're taking out two metres and that might account for the acceleration, deceleration, so yeah, great question, well spotted. And then you've just one more after coming in for Seamus. Um, would a retest on week four of the one kilometre time trial help to set new mass thresholds? Yeah, good question. So yeah, look, between four and six weeks is probably when, yeah, four would probably be a good a good point, depending on how many times you're doing it a week. But yeah, between four and six would be, um, I suppose, a good idea to see how they've improved. Okay, and that's the whole point of this this training. Okay, and they're using the one kilometer time trial is to see if they are making improvements and by how much. Okay, so yeah, look, between four and six weeks would probably be ideal, and then you could, I suppose, calculate new sets of runs and maybe switch to different method. Okay, it uh, does probably none no methods better than the other. Okay, or there's that's probably the case with them. So um. Yeah, look, it probably doesn't really matter which one you go for. Like I said, maybe the long, the longer, the lower intensity ones maybe first and then switch into your higher intensity. Um, but yeah, no, hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, um, Shame has actually followed up then with another one. Um, how long can an individual work on building speed? So maybe max 10 to 12 weeks and speed maintenance after that. Um, just shout that again there, Ian. How long can an individual work on building speed, max of 10 to 12 weeks, then it's maintenance? So I pres uh, my interpretation of the question is, so how long would you be working on trying to build fitness uh, by working on the maximum aerobic speed before just trying to carry on with the football and just maintain it by playing football? That would be my understanding of the question, Seamus. You might correct me on that. Yeah, yeah, I think or that's... Feel free to open your open up your mic if if I'm interpreting that wrong. Yeah, look, look if that was if that was probably myself, you could focus on maybe doing four to six weeks or whatever the case might be, and then you might. There are other methods of developing this as well. So, like at the minute, you might be able to do a month of this or six weeks is before you get back on the pitch. Okay, whether it be running on the road or running track or something like that, okay. And then when you get back on the pitch, you're probably going to be short time, okay. So you're going to be trying to prioritize things. So you can still develop your your fitness, I suppose, your aerobic and anaerobic fitness using something like small set of games that we would have hit on before. So um that might be another kind of useful method of of doing things as well. I don't know, that's V any opinion on that? No, I think small set of games is is exactly the one you can. Yeah. You're like what you mentioned at the start um, with the O2 model, James. You're hitting your, you're hitting your physical, your psychological, tactical, technical, all in the one there. Yeah, no, but it's a good point that you probably are early preseason, off season, trying to get up to, I suppose, a good conditioning level, and then I suppose just about maintaining it between that and the end of the season. Okay, so whether it be. You have to do maybe one or two of these every couple of weeks just to kind of get a little bit of a top up if you don't have games or the training volume is low or something like that. Just keep people ticking over. And do you want to go on, Ian? Yeah, so just to summarise, OK, so the maximum aerobic speed is useful for measuring performance. OK, so we went through our one kilometre time trial, OK, and how we can work out our, our calculations, okay, and how we retest and measure whether it is performing or whether there is improvements in performance, okay. Um, so training prescription, so hopefully it's a little bit clearer on how to individualize training um, or group training depending on um, whatever, sorry, I'm a little bit shown there. Yeah, sorry, is there a question there, Ian? Do you want to just jump to it? Yeah. Um, so Carl has asked uh, pre-championship would you use a six week block to increase um, I'd imagine that's like a top, like what you mentioned there the top up of the fitness levels yeah there's probably no nothing set in stone but there probably would be no harm I suppose if there's a break between maybe the championship and the league that you could I suppose if you're maybe training three times a week there might be no harm in doing this one evening one session a week okay just keep ticking over but probably the bulk of it would be done um, probably off-season, pre-season, if that makes sense. 
Okay, probably coming up the championship, I'd be prioritizing a lot more of our uh, tactical and uh, technical and our, our football or hurling side of things. Okay, that'd just be my own opinion. I don't know about you, lads. Yeah, I, I think that just has to be gauged at the time, really. Um, like obviously, Carl, if you feel that if you can see by looking at them, they don't look aerobically fit or in the games they haven't, um, then maybe it might be something you have to address. But I, if you can try and make that hit through games or through um, through intense ball activity and stuff like that, that's obviously where it's intensity you're obviously looking towards come championship time. But if you feel the hit's needed, yeah, it's, it can do the trick for you. It's just to jump in there as well, Ian, I'd say a good... Like we we covered it earlier already, and it's we've t- we've been talking about it through the presentation. But a, a good way to maybe figure out whether you do need that six week block would be to do a retest of the one kilometer time trial and see where lads we see where their mass is compared to the scores they may have got early on with their baseline, and probably base it off that so you can you can have a look. And if if they've dropped the level, then yeah, you, there might be something there. You might need to do four weeks five weeks or, or six weeks of um of a bit of a top up just to get the levels back up again but i'd say before making any decisions the best thing would be to do a retest of the one kilometer time trial just just to get an idea and see if the level has dropped yep that's a very good point um guys we'll just try to wrap it up quick enough now i know we've gone over the hour um but we won't keep you too much longer yeah I, i'll just finish off here so Look, we've touched on most of this already. So just to summarize that what is useful for us measuring performance, okay, uh, training prescription and monitoring training loads, okay. So I've kind of touched on all them. Um so look, I'll just flick through that. Um yeah, and then finding the, the most effective and time orientated methods for developing an athlete's aerobic power is of great importance, okay. Um and training training prescription based on MAS may facilitate these types of improvements. So hopefully kind of what we've touched on today. Might be some benefit going forward, okay? It might be um, a good way to get in conditioning this time of the year, especially, okay? Ian, if you're just going to flick on. <clears throat> yeah, so for anyone, I suppose, who um, the bottom two articles in specific here, actually, and the third one as well, the YouTube video, um, if anyone want to have a look at these, okay, or if I haven't been clear on anything, these go into these um, methods, okay, and a little bit more into mass um, in great, greater detail, okay? So if you want to have a look, Ian, you might be able to copy them and just put them into the, the box for anyone, okay? And I suppose we touched on our small side of games um, webinar, okay? And that's also up on our YouTube channel, okay? Um, so if you want to go, just look up Meat Caution and Games um, on YouTube and that should pop up. So we've all our previous webinars recorded on that and this one will probably be put up in the next week, okay? So, Ian. Yeah, that wraps us up. So lads, have you any anything to say? Uh, yeah, no, that's great. I'll get an email out with the slides, guys, and I'll get the any relevant links that James has there and the mass calculator, the previous YouTube video. I'll get that all up. And just a quick reminder, so you would have seen it in the Microsoft form I sent out to register for this. But obviously, two weeks' time, we've got our next webinar in the Fitness Roadshow series, which is the on speed and agility. So myself and Theresa Mollahan will be looking at how to develop speed and agility in youth players. Uh, so just on the screen there, guys, uh, you've got my email and James' email and phone numbers there. So if you are having a crack at mass and you're struggling with calculations or if you're looking for a bit of advice on setting up some kind of a program f- to improve mass scores, don't be afraid to to make contact with us. Uh, our phone number's there and our email's there. So even if you just want us to have a look of what you've done up yourself, just to double check and just just to give give a bit of a, a bit of an idea if 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 you're if you're along the right lines. So don't be afraid to to contact either of us if you if you need any help with anything. Well, we've one raised hand. Sorry, hold on if I can find who it is. Uh, lads, it was myself there, Carl. It's Carl. Uh, Carl. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I suppose that uh, obviously a lot of people there. Uh, especially in me, I'd, I'd say more so, don't have the access to, say, 80 metres or 100 metres. Um, I know personally from the girls I'm working with, they only have kind of roads, so they're running. So we've been using two and a half K. What's your kind of thoughts on things like that? 
Yeah, as a test, um, like what we were saying about the Cooper test of the 12 minutes, it's, it's absolutely super. Um, obviously then, for working on it, it is a bit awkward because we obviously have limited access to pitches and stuff at the minute. Um, it's not ideal. Um, but, yeah, look, uh, again, at the minute, it ha- I suppose you have to make do with what you can. Um, um, I know where... where I don't know where you're based, whether if you can, if you have uh, access to maybe oh, like a community oh, park or something like that. Territory. Yeah, but look, if, if there's that, even if it's access to a community park or some sort of patch of grass where you have 80 meters, or maybe even one of like what James is saying, it maybe it might be a case of altering the times if you have turns and things like that. But um, yeah, look, if you're putting the thought into it, Carl, and you're making do with what you can, you're you're probably you're probably making the most of it. Um, the guys' emails and stuff are there. Like you said, if you have, if you want to send us over anything to have a look at and give you feedback on it, absolutely no problem at all. Um, Ian and James, I don't know if you'd have anything to jump in on that. Yeah, just as just as Ian touched on there, uh, two Ians just to confuse things, but uh, just as he touched on there, obviously you make do with what you have. If that means you have to add extra turns, even when you're doing the one the one kilometer time trial. I suppose it's just something to bear in mind that when you when we do have access to GA pitches again, just to note that it may like it may cause some differences with the times, obviously because when you have your extra turns, it is gonna it is gonna change your time a bit. So while while we are making do with what we have, obviously we can we can work away, but just be mindful that when we do get back to the GA pitches, that it might be an idea to kind of do, I suppose, a second baseline. So just be understanding that the times might might be a bit different, and just once we are allowed to go back to back to GA pitches where we have our flat surfaces that we can, you can kind of do a retest and then kind of base it off that, and just just be mindful, of course, that the times may be affected by extra turns. Um, just I, this is just another thing I kind of like. It's it's more so on the just for the bit of team morale side of things, Carl. Um, even if you were able to do your 12 minute run or your two and a half K or whatever it was, but if you had some sort of a leaderboard or a scoreboard just to make a bit of crack with it and girls trying to get themselves moving up the leaderboard and you, and you, or you want to get away from the bottom one or you want to colour code it or whatever, or uh, it's just something to make a bit of crack out of as well, just to keep them going at this time. Yeah, just base, touching base on that, um, I think... Kind of leaderboard, uh, I know personally from playing myself and from feedback from a few of them. Um, a few of them actually went off completely, kind of running 5Ks pre, pre-lockdown before I'd come on board with them. Um, and a few of them actually kind of lost the love for running because they were doing these times and girls were kind of popping up their runs and some were slower than others. So um, that's kind of mm-hmm. just personally... Uh, coming from that side, where it, yeah, it's great fun. It, it probably works better with uh, men than it would uh, girls being a bit more conscious. Um, but yeah, that would work for men more so. Yeah, definitely, definitely something to consider. Um, yeah, absolutely. But look, look, Carl, uh, you definitely sound like you're onto the right track. You know, you know your girls and everything. Um, but obviously. For the mass, it is a bit limited with if you don't have the access to the space to do it, I suppose. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, I think that's um that's us pretty much pretty much wrapped up. We'll hang on the call for an extra couple of minutes just in case anyone does still have any more questions. But Ian, do you just wanna let the let the rest of them know, let let everyone know what's what's planned for the next couple of weeks? Um, yeah, just the Speed and Agility webinar in two weeks' time. I'll be circulating out the sign-up sheet again, but obviously everyone who's signed up here um, has access to that already. But uh, thanks a million for joining us tonight, guys, and hopefully we'll see mostly in two weeks' time. Thanks very much, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. <clears throat>